Canada. <clears throat> it was a glorious day here in this part of the world. And this week has been an excellent week for all of us with the appearance of Lord Chaitanya celebration of Gaur Purnima. And uh, <clears throat> this is an auspicious week for all of us moving forward into the future. And we want to thank all of you for participating in our weekly sadhana program of hearing the philosophy of Krishna consciousness from the unadulterated, unedited books by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, the founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. And I want to thank Bhakta Hari Prashad for hosting the meeting this evening as our production manager. Thank you very much, Bhakta Hari Prashad, for your efforts to be a part of this ongoing glorification of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. And it's interesting to note, everyone, that when I was looking at the videos before the class started, it was so inspiring to see how the movement had evolved in such a short period of time uh, <clears throat> and how successful Srila Prabhupada became despite how much difficulty he had in the early years. Yes, a lot of difficulty. It was not easy. And it was in many regards uh, somewhat discouraging for him. <clears throat> As you read the pastimes, he's gone to 94 Bower Bowery Street now. He's left the uh, <clears throat> office, uh, 501 in the office tower, where Dr. Mishra at 701, I believe that's the number, had his uh, one of his ashrams, and he had another ashram called the Ananda Ashram, which was in Monroe, just outside of New York. So Prabhupada had moved down to the 501 room, and he had been broken in to by some kind of thief, and they stole his typewriter and his tape recorder. Now you can imagine how disturbing that was because Prabhupada had no money, absolutely. And when we read forward today, we're gonna see how he was meticulously counting his pennies and dollars. He was not uh, <clears throat> whimsical in terms of how he handled his money. He was very concise. And that gives us an insight into the behavior of a truly successful person. That a successful person is, has an acute attention to detail. And especially 
in the case of Srila Prabhupada, <clears throat> he was meticulous in dealing with everything because he could understand that everything that happens is by the arrangement of Paramatma, Krishna from within the heart. Nothing happens by chance or accident. It's all by the grace of the Lord, even though sometimes things may become difficult. Yes, sometimes we get put into problematic situations which seem confusing. Why has this happened? For example, in the ISKCON movement, we've seen a lot of people get involved with that group and then become disenchanted because of the guru system that they have, their initiation system, uh, their change of multiple things. We won't discuss all of them today, but all of you are aware of them. That's why you're here with us, because we have a mission, everyone, which is to protect the legacy of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada in everything that we do. That's our mission. And we speak out when we see things are not being followed according to his instructions. And these classes, uh, oftentimes with our membership, they move into these points of philosophy because people are genuinely interested in knowing the facts of how this movement has evolved from the glory days when Prabhupada was with us to the circumstances that we're in, in 2024. Yes. And I've been mentioning it to all of us that we should look at it as a giant overview of everything that goes on and not become discouraged because it's all by Krishna's arrangement. How is it? Well, it's hard to understand Krishna's plan, but we're part of it. And these actions that we're taking these days in presenting these classes, putting out our newsletters, printing books like in Mexico, Krishna Kishori is publishing books in Mexico in Spanish, unadulterated. He just released the... Uh, <clears throat> Beyond Birth and Death, I want to just show you just quickly. Look at these books. I picked these up in Mexico. Look, that's Spanish. Here is On the Way to, uh, on the way to Krishna in Spanish. And here he has his magazines. He explained to me he didn't want to call them Back to Godhead because of copyright infringements, so he created Back to Krishna. That's a wonderful title. And really, really nice looking magazines. We're planning to do an initiation ceremony in August. He has a large community of devotees, fairly large anyway, relatively speaking, <laughs> compared to what's going on. He has about 25, 30 bhaktas that he's working with in his area. And he has seven people that are prepared for initiation that are chanting the four regulated principles or following the four regulated principles. They are chanting 16 rounds and are preaching Krishna consciousness uh, according to Prabhupada's directions. And He's, he's submitted their names, he's submitting their names to us to chant on the beads, and then uh, he will perform the fire sacrifice in Mexico as a temple president. Interesting, very interesting. This is exactly the system that Prabhupada wanted for initiation. And he has carefully scrutinized their behavior. And on their, on his approval, uh, we are prepared to accept them on his approval for initiation. 
and move forward step by step, building the Prabhupada Disciples Association, Hare Krishna Society, according to Prabhupada's plan. So congratulations to him. Look, I see he's on the class here. Look at this. Anandabaya, look. These are the stickers he has. So he has these Prabhupada stickers. He has other stickers. He gives them out. Look, look at this one. Okay, sorry. And here's another one. He gave me a series of stickers. We were fortunate enough to meet at the airport, him and his wonderful wife. That's a perfect example. Oh, <laughs> perfect example of a Grihasta couple working together to spread the Sankirtan mission of Lord Chaitanya without adulteration uh, and according to Prabhupada's instructions. So lots of nectar from Mexico. It's a very fertile preaching area, by the way. You know, lots of devotees, too many devotees uh, quite confused by the whole thing. And there's been an influx of, uh, how can I say, <clears throat> Godiamat gurus that are there to try to you know, attract people for their guru business as well. We're going to go, I hope, uh, <clears throat> Hari Prashad, do you have the uh, diaries that I sent to Vincott? Did you receive them? Hare Krishna Prabhu, yeah, I just received them. Okay, great. So we'll start with, uh, thank you very much, by the way. Really appreciate it. Thank you. It's my pleasure, Prabhu. Thank you very much. Sunday, May 1st. Let's go to the pages. We'll read them quickly. I want you to everyone to get the feel of the of the diaries, how Prabhupada was struggling, where he was at back on May 1st, 1966. Sunday, May 1st. Sunrise 501, sunset 654, moonset 330, Dwadasi. We came back from Ananda Ashram. At 6.30, expenditure was 30 cents. Appears that he went on the bus to fares. Paul was not at home at night. He went for work. Okay, there we are. Thank you. Sun Monday, May 2nd. So the day's clock on. Sunrise, 5. Yeah, I think I sent another page. Or is that it? I think I sent you another page or Vincott. <clears throat> Moon set 357, try, try Odasi. Today I did not go out the whole day. I stayed in. I was engaged with my typewriter. So Prabhupada's focused on writing. Paul came back from work at about 10.30 a.m. and deposited with me $25 for rent. There was no expenditures. In the evening, there was a meeting. Only five gentlemen attended, including Paul. This is Paul Murray. $5 contribution. Mr. Carl brought his tape recorder. The appearance gorgeous, but action is very poor. He did not act to my satisfaction. Tuesday, May 3rd. Sunrise, 4.58. Sunset, 6.56. Moonset, 4.20. So clocking time. Chatur Dasi, today I delivered the keys of 72nd House to the Secretary of the Landlord at 33 Riverside Drive. She returned $35 in terms of my registered notice, so the account at 100 West 72nd Street is now closed. I've handed over to Dr. Mr. the keys of the Studio 501. He has invited me to dine with him on Friday the 6th instant. Paul was paid expenditure $2. Subway and bus fare, 45 cents. The Paragon Book Gallery man, Mr. Max, met. He reported that they are selling the books. Okay, excellent. So we'll move forward here. We'll read. Move on here. Wednesday, May 4th. Oh. May 3rd. May 4th. My... Got that? 
Sunrise 457, sunset 657, moonset 451, Purnima. No, May 4th. Keep going. I'm just in April. Yeah, no problem. We'll get it worked out in due course. Thank you, by the way. <clears throat> I'll read through. Expenditure subway fare, 15 cents. Paid Paul for expenditure, $1. And for his laundry, $2. Deposited with the bank, $70. Expenditure was $73.15. In the evening, the meeting was held. It was nice. Seven gentlemen attended. Contribution received was six seventy five. Mr. Carl was very kind to give me over the tape recorder, which is better than the one I have lost. Two, ten, two stamps given to Paul. Thursday, May 5th. Sunrise, 456. Sunset, 658. Moonrise, 812 p.m. Pratipad. Received one redirected letter from Vrindavan. I have already replied his former letter. He appears to be very much anxious about me always. He's one of his god brothers. And Paul is paid uh, for expenditure one dollar. Friday, May 6th. Let's see. I'll, Hadi Prashad, I'll be able to send them directly to you next time so you won't have to get them from Vincott. Friday, May 6th, sunrise 4.55 a.m., sunset 6.59 p.m., moonrise 9.23. Dwight, to today I did not go out. Paul was paid for expenditure $2. In the evening, there was a meeting, and the contribution collected was $5. I think what we'll do, <clears throat> we'll move forward with the uh, Bhajan Jaya Radha Madhava. Kunja Bihari, sang by Srila Prabhupada. Hopefully it's in New York. In 1972, when I was there working in the kitchen in the basement, cooking prasadam, I got burnt actually by a huge Yashoda, by a huge pot of oil. And when the oil fell over my chest, I thought I was going to be hospitalized. And by a miracle, nothing happened to me. Very interesting. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Let's move forward with the chanting of Jaya Radham Madhava Kunja Bihari. Sai.
सर्वदस्यमान भक्त सिद्धांत सरस्वती भूषामी प्रभुपादी जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णविंद की जय रामाचार्य शिल हरिदास ठाकुर की जय प्रिंस कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद से अद्वैत गदाधार शिवास आदि गौर भक्त श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गो गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरिवर्धन की जय वृंदावन धाम की जय नवदीप धाम की जय स्वामी दो भक्त बिंद की जय गंगा माई की जय जमुना माई की जय तुलसी देवी की जय भक्ति देवी की जय स्वामी दो भक्त बिंद की जय ऑल ग्लोरी इस जय संबल ऑल ग्लोरी इस जय संबल थैंक यू वेरी मच I'm having problems connecting. I'm having problems connecting with the video. Okay. All right. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Oh my Lord Sri Krishna, the son of Vasudeva. the all pervading personality of godhead i offer my respectful obeisances unto you narayanam namaskritya narayanam namaskritya naram cheva narottamam naram cheva narott tamam devim saraswatim vyasam devim saraswatim vyasam tato jayam mudirayet tato jayam mudirayet one should utter the means of conquest shrimad bhagavatam or sri chaitanya charitamrita after offering respectful obeisances one to the personality of godhead narayana two to the nara narayana rishi who is the supermost human being three to the mother saraswati the goddess of learning then four to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Thanks everybody for coming to this reading and discussion on Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. As we do every week, we will be reading a few selected verses from the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita itself, from the Adi Lila, chapter eight, chapter one, text eighteen through twenty-two. Adi Lila. Of Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chapter One, Text Eighteen through Twenty-Two. Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda. Jai Dwaita Chandra Jai Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. Glory to Sri Chaitanya and Nityananda. Glory to Dwaita Chandra. And glory to all the devotees of Sri Gora, Lord Chaitanya. Text nineteen, eighteen. Thakur Gaudiya ke kariye chena yatmasat. 
etine rocharana vandan tire morenat. These three deities of Vrindavana, Madan Mohan, Govinda, and Gopinata have absorbed the heart and soul of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, followers of Lord Chaitanya. I worship their lotus feet, for they are the lords of my heart. Text number 20. Grantera Rambikari Mangala Charana Guru Vaishnav Bhagavan Tinera Smarana In the beginning of this narration, simply by remembering the spiritual master, the devotees of the Lord, and the personality of Godhead, I have invoked their benedictions. Text number 21. Tinera smaranei vigna vinashana anayasi anayasi nijavanchita purana. Such remembrance destroys all difficulties and very easily enables one to fulfill his own desires. <coughs> Vastu nirdesha chirvada namaskara. The invocation involved three processes defining the objective, offering benedictions, and offering obeisances. Again, welcome everyone to this reading and discussion on Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Can you excuse my lack of connectivity here? I'm still dealing with the issue of the, uh, a breakdown with my desktop computer, which crashed. It's going to get, it's getting rehabilitated and back on action reasonably soon, just functioning with the cell phone. Very interesting to note that Srila Prabhupada calls the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita the postgraduate study of spiritual life. Why does he say that? Because this is a very advanced book of knowledge, of transcendental knowledge. Shila Prabhupada several times lamented how one of the major problems with modern civilization is that there is no educational institution to understand the science of the soul. There are many sophisticated institutions to understand the body and the principles of eating, sleeping, mating and defending, economic development, technological advancement, all of these things pertaining to the material body. How to understand the presence of the spirit soul and the destination of that soul after the soul leaves the body, that knowledge is not being taught in modern universities. Chaitanya Charitamrita gives us a hint and explains very nicely the exalted position of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in incarnation of Krishna, who appeared in Bengal in Mayapur in 1486 AD. And his teachings are very nicely presented all the translations, synonyms, and purport in these readings are from His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, also known as the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Today we will be reading from Adi Lila, Chapter 4, I believe we have text 196 from page 334. Upetya pati sundari tati bira bira bhyarchitam smitam kura karam viteram natadapanga bangishatai stana stavaga sancharan nayana chanchari kanchalam Vrajibi jainam vajibi pina deshata hakke shavam 
Upetya, having mounted their palaces, Pati, on the path, Sundaritatibihi, Abihi, but the women of Raja, Abhyarchitam, who is worshipped, Smita Ankura Karambitai, intermingle with the sprouts of gentle smiles, Natat dancing, Apanga of glances, Bangishatai, with a hundred manners, Stanastavaka, the multitude of breasts, Sancharat wandering about, Nayana, of the two eyes, chancharika, like bees, anchalam, him whose corners, vraje in vraja, vijayinam, coming, vaje, I worship, vipinadi shataha, <coughs> from the forest, keshabam, Lord Keshava. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. I worship Lord Keshava. Coming back from the forests of Vraja, he is worshipped by the gopis who mount the roofs of their palaces and meet him on the path with a hundred manners of dancing glances and gentle smiles. The corners of his eyes wander like large black bees around the gopi's breast. Purport. This statement appears in the Keshava Ashtaka 8 of the Stabamala compiled by Srila Rupa Goswami. Text 197. Akaikar gopi premara swabhavika chinna. Ye prakarya e prema kama gandahina ara another eka one gopi premera of the love of the gopis swabhavika natural chinna symptom ye which prakare in the way oya his prema the love Kamagandahina without a trace of lust. Translation There is another natural symptom of the gopi's love that shows it to be without a trace of lust. Text 198 Gopi Premekari Krishna Madhuryera Pushti Madhurya Badaya Premahana Mahatushti Gopi Preme, the love of the gopis. Kare, does. Krishna Madhuryera, of the sweetness of Lord Krishna. Pushti, nourishment. Madhurye, the sweetness. Badaya, causes to increase. Prema, the love. Hana, being. Mahatushti, greatly pleased. Translation. The love of the gopis nourishes the sweetness of Lord Krishna. That sweetness in turn increases their love for they are greatly satisfied. Text 199. Pritivishayananti Tanhana hini jasuka vanchara sambanda priti vishaya anandi in the joy of the object of love. Tat of that love. Asraya ananda the joy of the abode. Taha that. Nahi not. Nijasuka vanchara of desire for one's own happiness. Sambanda relationship. Translation. The happiness of the abode of love is in the happiness of the object of that love. This is not a relationship of desire for personal gratification. 
text 200 and 201. Nirupa di premio yan hatan hairiti, priti vishaya suke ashraya priti, nija premanande krishna sevananda bade, seanandera prati bhakti rahai mahakrodi, nirupa di without identification, prema love, yanha witch. Tanha that a this riti style priti vishaya of the object of love suke in the happiness asrayera of the abode of that love priti the pleasure nija one's own prema of love anande by the joy. Krishna to Lord Krishna, Seva Ananda, the joy of service. Bhadhi is obstructed. Say that. Anandera Prati, toward the joy. Bhaktera of the devotee. Haya is Mahakrodi, great anger. Translation. Whenever there is unselfish love, das is its style. The reservoir of love derives pleasure when the lovable object is pleased. <laughs> when the pleasure of love interferes with the service of Lord Krishna, the devotee becomes angry towards such ecstasy. Purport. As mentioned above, the gopis are the predominated lovers, and Sri Krishna is the predominator, the beloved. The love of the predominated nourishes the love of the predominator. The gopis had no desire for selfish enjoyment. Their feeling of happiness was indirect, for it was dependent on the pleasure of Krishna. Causeless love of Godhead is always so. Such pure love is possible only when the predominated is made happy by the happiness of the predominator. Such unadulterated love is exemplified when the lover deprecates her happiness in service that hinders her from discharging it. O Magyana Timirandasya Nyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasme Shri Gurave Namaha Namaum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashatya Deshatarine Bhakti Siddhanta Shishyayam Bhakti Vedanta Nam Bhagavad Vandanam Kadhyam Guru Vandana Purvakam Kshiram Sharkara Yuktam Kadati Visheshataham Adadana Strinam Danter Idam Yachi Punaha Punaha Srimadrupa Padam Bhoja Dulisyam majan majan mani amsho bhagavatu smyaham sadadasu asmi sarvata tat kripa pikshako nityam tat prishta shatat karumishvam sri krishna chetanyam prabhu nityananda Shri Advaita Gadhadara Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindam 
हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Again, we have another series of verses from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita explaining the unique and special position of the Gopikas of Raja, the coward girls of Raja Bhumi or Vrindavana, materialistic persons find it very difficult to understand. the pastimes of Lord Krishna with the gopis, whether it is the Rasalila or other transcendental activities of Krishna with the gopis, they find it somewhat difficult to comprehend how Krishna can be dancing and frolicking with these ladies and girls in the middle of the night. But this is not for personal sense gratification. One of Krishna's name is called Purushottama, Purusha Uttama, the ultimate enjoyer, the supreme enjoyer. Krishna is always trying to bring the living entities who are stuck in this material world, suffering in this world, to bring them back to the kingdom of God to the transcendental world where there is no suffering. There's no more birth, no more death, no more old age, no more disease. This is very important because we see in this material world, there is so much endeavor to counteract the miseries of the world. the whole medical industry, hospital industry, pharmaceutical industry is all dedicated to try to relieve the miseries pertaining to the body. But no one can stop it completely. No one can stop the influence of old age and death. This is the natural byproduct of being in this material world. So many times we hear, oh, since such and such relative had a heart attack, such and such relative has been diagnosed with cancer, such and such relative has a very hard time suffering from so many different diseases or illnesses. Yes, that is the position of the material world. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, There is a Sanskrit word called kleshada. Klesha means suffering and misery. Da or da means giving. This body is always giving some kind of suffering. Oh, there may be some temporary enjoyment, flickering enjoyment, but it is very, very brief. It is not permanent. We have often discussed how every living entity in the material world is subject what is called Shad Urmi, or six waves of the ocean of material existence. Every living being is subjected to these waves. Kama, Kroda, Loba, Mada, Moha, Matsarya. Lust, anger, Greed, illusion, madness, and envy. These are the six waves. And this human form of life, one can finish all of this problematic situation. One can utilize his God-given intelligence to hear of the activities of Krishna. And by hearing these activities of Krishna, and molding one's life in such a way that one can remember Krishna, at a time of death, one can be transferred to Krishna's planet. This is not accomplished by mechanical means. It is not accomplished by some kind of mechanical arrangement. 
This is the process recommended in the Bhagavad Gita, the scripture that was di directly spoken by the Lord himself, by Bhagavan Sri Krishna himself 5,000 years ago on the plain of Kurukshetra, north of Delhi. Krishna explains in the fourth chapter, Janma karma chami divyam evam yo veti tattvataha chaktvadeham punara janma naiti ma miti so arjuna. That my dear Arjuna, one who remembers the transcendental nature of my activities does not come back to this material world. One has to train the mind, train the body to think of Krishna, to remember Krishna. But in this material world, the mind is being trained to think of so many nonsense things. There are so many distractions to keep the mind engaged in this material world, engaged in perpetuating the suffering situation. Just like there are certain physical diseases where the doctor will place certain restrictions on the patient. Why? To get the patient to recover, to come back to a normal, healthy state of health. Says so you should not eat this, you should not eat that. You should take such and such medication and gradually you will recover. But if one is stubborn and wants to do things whimsically his own way and not listen to doctor's advice, then the disease or the suffering condition will continue. Similarly, in this material world, there are so many different guidelines given by the great acharyas, the great spiritual teachers, spiritual professors. Just like if you go to university in the field of law, engineering, accounting, medicine, so many different fields, there are certain authorities, experienced personalities who are able to teach in these various fields. And if one listens, goes to the classes, does the assignments gradually, gradually, one can also become a, an accomplished person and get his degree. So in this material world, there are certain accomplished professors, experienced professors of spiritual life. Mahajanoyenagasatsapantaha. In order to understand the science of the soul and how to solve this problem of birth, death, old age, and disease, and how to understand Krishna's transcendental activities, one has to hear from a realized person, from a fully realized, spiritualized person, a liberated person, one who has no more influence by the influence of the material energy. Such a person is found in the personality of Srila Prabhupada, a fully realized, fully accomplished, fully liberated personality. And his teachings are all given in his books, his original, non-edited, non-changed, non-adulterated, non-interpolated books. Why do we keep saying this? <laughs> so that people can get the original message. So that persons who are seriously interested in spiritual life can get the original message without any tinge of false interpretation. Nowadays, we see so many imitators. While sometimes it is said that imitation is the highest form of flattery, but Srila Prabhupada one time in one lecture said, imitation is always bad. And he repeated it. He says, imitation is always bad. One is being told by the Acharyas to follow the example 
of great liberated saintly personalities, not to imitate. Some of you may be familiar, or all of you may be familiar, with a very powerful statement in a nectar of instruction where Srila Prophet admonishes and warns that if one imitates the behavior of a Mahabhagavata without being self-realized, eventually one will become degraded. It is not recommended for a neophyte or a practitioner to imitate the behavior of a Mahabhagavata. And it has been practically seen by practical example that persons who have engaged in this imitation business have become degraded. We don't wish anybody any ill will or false criticism. This is not what this is all about. But a person has to use his intelligence to learn from past mistakes, to learn from past experiences. Why does Prabhupada say that? Because Krishna doesn't like false imitators, false pretenders. Spiritual life is described in the Upanishad at Kshurasya Dara, just like a razor's edge. If you deal with a razor or a very sharp knife, just like the other day I was cutting some flour and some vegetables and a little bit of an attention. Whoops, the finger got cut, the blood is everywhere, almost to the bone, so you have to take some measure to stop it. But this is the result of inattention. Mistake. This is the tendency of conditioned soul. To imitate. This is very important. Because we see so many persons. They are dissatisfied. Or disillusioned. Or disenchanted. With many other practitioners of spiritual life. Feeling that these people do not represent Srila Prabhupada, his purity, his teachings, his message, his mission. Well, there is a solution. Some of you may be familiar with that famous statement of Srila Prabhupada. That the temples may fail. The devotees may fail. But my books will never fail. Unquote. This is not very difficult to understand. It is not complicated. The only reason why things become complicated is if we allow this pod problem, profit, adoration, and distinction to come between Srila Prabhupada and his message. Then it becomes troublesome. Oh, it may be appealing for some time, some cheap popularity, some cheap money-making. Yeah, it may be appealing for some time, but it doesn't last. It's like we keep discussing this issue of Srila Prabhupada in a very famous conversation with one of his disciples, Shyamasundar Das. They were discussing the communist system. And Prabhupada's position was anything that's imperfect eventually will fail. Whatever propaganda you may make, if it is imperfect, it will fail. If it's born on a false basis, it will fail. Similarly, in following spiritual life, in trying to advance in spiritual life, one has to be very diligent and very careful where you hear from, whom you hear from. One should not hear from pretenders, imitators, self-appointed so-called acharyas, voted in acharyas, nonsense people, pretenders. There's a whole slew of different sahajas and mayavadis masquerading these days as spiritual authorities, presenting themselves as great accomplished persons. And the minute you try to tell these people that they should follow and promote Prabhupada, oh, they become angry. The other become silent. The other become angry. Or they will issue some nonsense argument. <laughs> Why? Because they have a personal agenda. They have a personal agenda. They take to the teachings, not for promoting the teachings, 
not for promoting the Acharya, but for self-promotion and self-aggrandizement. Very dangerous. Regardless of how many years you've been practicing, how much experience you have, you have to develop the intelligence, not in 10 years, now, to detect imitators and pretenders and bluffers. This is what Prophet is telling us in the Bhagavad Gita. This is what Prophet is telling us in so many lectures, so many conversations everywhere. It's not difficult to understand. First, you have to hear from the authorized persons, liberated persons like Srila Prabhupada. Then practice nicely, offer your food stuff to Krishna, do the chanting, do the kirtan. Then gradually all of these troublesome motive passion things will gradually disappear and one will feel a relief from the influence of the material energy. But to progress further, do not be swayed by the propaganda of the imitators. The imitators, persons with their political personal agenda, be aware, be aware. We have seen these persons. The minute we suggested that Prabhupada should be fully in the center of ISKCON and should be the only worship of Bhushaparacharya in ISKCON, they become angry. They protest. They will have so many nonsense, vexatious, ridiculous arguments why they should be worshipped. Just see. After years and years of chanting and hearing, they still do not understand what is a Mahabhagavata, what is a pure devotee, what is a liberated soul, what is a Nitya Siddha from the spiritual world. They still do not get it. They may never get it because there's a block. Just like in California, sometimes in the winter, there are a lot of mountains here, especially in Northern California. And they have different canyons and different roads. And sometimes some big rocks will fall and obstruct the roadway. You can no longer go on that road unless there's a repair. You cannot just pretend that I have a map and it tells me there's a road that goes from. Sometimes you cannot go there. Similarly, in order to advance in spiritual life, all these stumbling blocks must be removed. One has to develop the sharp intelligence to discern this. To whom it may concern. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Glorious to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you very much for the excellent explanation of our philosophy of truth. Guru Tattva. And uh, I wanted to quickly mention that on text 195, Hari Prashad, if you could go back to that in Chaitanya Charitamrita, text 195, therefore we find that the joy of the gopis nourishes the joy of Lord Krishna. For that reason, the fault of lust is not present in their love. So here it comes out. Yes, thank you. Here we comes out the uh, position of lust as opposed to prema, lust. Purport, by looking at the beautiful gopis, Krishna became, becomes enlivened. And this enlivens the gopis whose youthful faces and bodies blossom. This competition of increasing beauty between the gopis and Krishna which is without limitations, is so delicate that sometimes mundane moralists mistake these dealings to be purely amorous by these affairs, but these affairs are not at all mundane because the gopis' intense desire to serve, to satisfy Krishna surcharges the entire scene with pure love of Godhead with not a spot of sexual indulgence. So, this is an important point to make the distinction between prema, love of God, and uh, lust in English, which is love. We're indoctrinated into that. Human life 
is the status of most called human animal life is the status of most so-called human beings. Prabhupada used the example of sophisticated cats and dogs. Sophisticated. So they go to a restaurant, they sit down, they have someone wait on them, they bring them uh, meat dishes to eat. They eat with a nice fork and spoon and knife. They cut the flesh. They eat it. And in this way, they think that they are special. But in fact, they're simply sophisticated animals. This is the modern world. Of course, it's perpetrated largely by modern propaganda. We see all these so-called stars in life that are being respected and honored by others. But what are they in reality? How do they live their lives? Recently, there is this scandal going on in Hawaii, or uh, in Hollywood, excuse me, with some kind of rap artist. And the scandal is outrageous. He's acting like a complete animal. So, There is a big distinction between a human being that's a Krishna conscious person and a human being that is nothing but an animal. And let's be clear on this, Prabhus, that the human society is an animalistic society that's operating on the lowest levels of existence. They eat anything anything they do anything in the name of sense gratification and in this way how can someone expect to be qualified to understand these verses in chaitanya charitamrita which are dealing with the highest subject matters possible in the universe it's very difficult to understand this extremely difficult We can read them, we'll become purified by them, we can keep chanting and progress forward, and by the grace of Krishna from within the heart, Prabhupada was saying in a lecture, Anandabhaya, Paramatma is within the heart of every living being. I dwelling within the heart destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. By Krishna's grace, through the practice of devotional service as given by Srila Prabhupada, you will get Vigyanam realization through devotional service and rise up out of the animal life that we are conditioned by in this especially Western world. Of course, it's all over the world now. It's not just here in the West. <clears throat> and this conditioning disqualifies people from higher spiritual understanding. Even though death is facing them at every moment, they have no idea why they were born. This week, I just got a call from a friend of mine, and he announced to me one of my childhood friends had died two days ago again. Multiple deaths, it's just ongoing that people are dying. And did he have any understanding of why he was born? What was the purpose of life? and where he would go at the time of death, zero, zero understanding. So this human society is destined for destruction. That's why there's so many wars, so much karmic tragedy that's going on, because people are acting like animals, not human beings. And Prabhupada came specifically And you can see how wonderful it is. Prabhupada came with this mission to try to give sincere people a chance to rise up out of this condition of material existence, the mode of ignorance and passion, to the transcendental mode of goodness through the process of bhakti yoga. This is a very great gift that we have been given by the grace of the pure devotee. And we should take advantage of it Uh, to our best ability as the human form of life 
comes and goes like the turning on and off of a light. You think you'll live on, but you don't. And nobody is guaranteed another moment. Tonight you could pass in your sleep. You never know. So by being serious about this process, praying to Krishna for the mercy to stay focused on his, pro his chanting of the holy name and the message from Srila Prabhupada, we have a chance, all of us, irrespective of who we are, <coughs> to get the highest benefit affordable in the human form of life. <coughs> I'm going to get Tim uh, Paranjana Prabhu, who I see is on the class, I believe, still. Maybe he could make a few comments further moving forward. Paranjana Prabhu, please. Uh, yes, Haribo. Haribo Prabhu. Yeah, Haribo. Yes, Prabhu. Haribo. Yeah. So, uh, I was just thinking today how how difficult it is, even for someone who has theoretical yeah. knowledge. You know, Prabhu talks about theoretical knowledge. You know, theoretically, we understand we're not the body. Theoretically. We understand, uh, you know, there's a supreme being, but still we're entangled. So um, I was just talking today with some devotees about how Bhakti Siddhanta gave the example of the wedding party. They got into a boat and at night and they were paddling. And in the morning they were in the same spot because they didn't let go of the anchor. So uh, that's our, all of us have that situation. We're still grasping the material, whatever it is, you know, different things in this world. And there's unlimited things to be attached to in this world. People are attached to their cat, or even if you're a great yogi and you're attached to a deer, uh, you can become entangled. So it's very difficult. But, you know, at, at the same time, you know, Prabhupada says Krishna consciousness is, is very easy. It's very easy because Krishna is with you at all times. And all you have to do is remember that Krishna's with you and and try to you know love the Lord and and Pallad Maharaj was instructing his demoniac friends that way. He said it looks very difficult, but actually Krishna's always with you. He's residing in your heart. All you have to do is communicate and cooperate with Krishna, and then you know it becomes very simple and easy. So it, it, that's why Prabhupada says it's simple for the simple and complicated for the crooked <laughs> so that that's basically our problem we, we we've had this crooked hearted disease for such a long time and uh we can't just you know freely give up our material attachments so it's very important to uh keep meditating on krishna and in that way you know gradually gradually we'll get purified of all these material grasping situations we, we we've been in since since time immemorial actually haribo haribo thank you and i wanted to comment just quickly i was recently visiting someone and it was remarkable how memory operates in other words he could remember details even up back to when he was in the womb and then he could remember pastimes that took place in his early childhood. And then he could remember everything that went on with his brother, everything with his mother, everything with his uncle, everything, this ongoing description, talking, 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 this whole phantasmagoria of the material world is just captivated his mind. This is called Prajalpa, useless conversation. We're so often encountering people that talk uselessly like a frog croaking and eternal time is coming just to, like the snake of eternal time is just coming to eat them. So controlling the tongue controlling the hearing process. These are the principles of bhakti yoga that we are following 
in Krishna consciousness according to Prabhupada's direction. And Yashoda Nandana made a wonderful point about getting the information of Krishna from the pure devotee without any change. I was listening to a lecture Prabhupada was giving Yashoda Nandana Prabhu, and he was saying, what is the value of a third-class man who interprets the Bhagavad Gita for his own selfish purposes? Where is the authority when a third-class man uh, translates the Bhagavad Gita according to their own particular purpose, as you called it, profit, adoration, and distinction? Third class means there is no authority. That was Prabhupada's direction. There is no authority. You cannot change one word. Otherwise, you're disconnected from the transcendental relationship between him, his spiritual master, and Lord Chaitanya. Not one word. Do not change one word. And this is a disease, everyone like cancer. It's like bad association. Bad association is like cancer for a sincere person. And cancer spreads. It can spread amongst a group of devotees too, from one yeah. person to the next. And this cancer can affect everybody's opportunity to go back to Godhead. So we should be very careful to avoid the association of cancerous so-called Vaishnavas that are pretending to be situated on the Uttama Adhikari platform of devotional service when they are nothing close to that. It is simply imitation. Dharma Bhavana in Dallas, Texas. Please, if you could share your realization. I see you've got a nice chunk. Oh, Hare Krishna, thank you. Yeah. Very good. Beautiful, beautiful class again. Thank um, you. And just remember back about eight or nine years ago, my wife had a serious shoulder injury. We ended up being in India. Uh-huh. And uh, we were sent to a Palakkad Kerala uh-huh. to an Ayurvedic hospital for 21 days. Oh. And there was a yoga man, a young man instructing yoga about six o'clock in the morning, doing all the exercises. For those who wanted to attend and do it and he was just ex- explaining how he thought that um overall in the general population there was great confusion about sp- spiritual life spiritual authority what are we supposed to do as human yeah and i was just reflecting how um uh like like say for example during our reading and discussions yeah. the, the whole purpose is it's not just to read the scriptures but it's to understand how a very important part of spiritual life is to have a to find your eternal preceptor guru, like Sri Prabhupada. And uh, the activities that we're performing or trying to perform are the same as what we did in 1966, 68, 70, 77. The same activities, the same deity worship, same way to offer food, prasadam, same way to um, you know, t- follow the initiation process. But for yeah. a, a lot of those who are a little bit new, it's been such a mumbo jumble of confusion that it's hard to kind of put things together and figure things out. So anyway, I thank you for the classes. I was going to mention one thing that uh, even sometimes, <clears throat> like some devotees may have a, a Prabhupada Nuka organization or, and they may even share deities of ISKCON photos of the deities, which are beautiful, but it may create confusion among some people that, you just like the in the uh, Chaitanya Charter Media, it says that uh, Gopinath, Madan Mohan, Ravinaji, Ma, uh, these deities are the heart and soul of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. And uh, so we, we kind of mention that in Chaitanya Leela over and over again. But if someone sees you know, different pictures, they may take it that it's all one, it's all the same. There's really no you know, discrimination because some places of greatly minimized Prabhupada and severely offended him and his disciples. And it's, it's still a, a lot of confusion going on. So I think the class is very helpful. Anyway, thank you. Howdy, Bo. Uh, we'll get to John Espria. You, uh, you showed an Nandana Prabhu. Do you want a further comment? Is your microphone on? 
He's a very accomplished, realized soul. Have him speak. Who, John Espria? Yeah, John Espria in Hawaii, please, Sheriff. We're going to end the class at 9.30 today. So please go ahead, John Espria. In Hawaii. I know he's trying to push the button. Hmm. Yashoda, go ahead, please, further comment. I think that our friend in Texas, John Rabavana, made a very good point. It's one thing to take some nectar from Prabhupada or Krishna and present it, but one has to be very careful not to distort, not to change the presentation that has been given. Because if we start, can't unmute. Uh, if we start to distort the teaching, then it can mislead people <laughs> And there will not be a good result. The result will not be good. Want us to be very aware of this and be very, very careful. Is Janus Priya available? He can't unmute. Go ahead, please. No, he's not available, Yashoda Prabhu. <laughs> He's not available. You showed her. Okay. Well, we'll move forward. Um, <clears throat> Shama Sundar in Australia. Are you available to the microphone? The Samosa King. He uh, <clears throat> cooks the uh, thousands of samosas every week and distributes books in Australia. He could be away from the microphone. Let's check and see. Shama Sundar Prabhu, are you available to speak? Okay, we're having a little trouble. Sean Evans in Michigan. Maybe you could share some of your insights today to the group here at the Chaitanya Chart and read a, readings and discussions. Sean Evans, Dr. Sean. Mm -hmm. Is your microphone working, Sean? Um, darn it. No? We're not getting too much luck here with our group. Let's get uh, Graham Schweig, Garuda Prabhu. Maybe you'd like to make a comment, please. Okay, we're falling apart here. Nilesh Dalal, Shama Sundar. He always has something. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Paul Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Yes. Yeah, I joined in a, I joined in a little bit late, but it is interesting okay. that uh, uh, what was discussed over here about uh, yeah. uh, what you call getting the knowledge from the proper source, you know, uh, as Prabhupada says, it should be successive bona fide knowledge that we should yeah. be getting it from. You know, successive meaning coming in disciplined succession. And when I, when I was thinking about this particular aspect of disciplined succession, uh, one thing interesting which came to my mind is the so-called gurus of ISKCON today, can they nominate or can they order their, any of their disciples to become guru? <laughs> because the GVC will not allow that to happen. So now tell me what is going on with their discipline succession. Think about it. Because Prabhupada has always told us that you become guru only when you are ordered by your spiritual master to become guru. So now that they are gurus, will they be able to order their any of their disciples who they think is uh, appropriate to become guru, GBC will not allow that. GBC will they, not allow that. Ah, uh, they're doing it. Radhanath has a few people 
that he's already appointed as gurus and created his own disciplic succession, Prabhu. Actually, so that means he's getting away from the GBC. And yeah, that is why and Jaya, he is Jaya, Dwaita, Jaya Dwaita also initiate, had yes. uh, K- Kadamba Kanana, who claims uh-huh. he went back to Godhead, and he did a video. He said, uh, when you all pass away, you'll all join me in Baikunta Dam in Krishna okay. Loka. So right. this type of, you know, it's very interesting you brought this up because this is how these independent people are trying to prop you know, uh, uh, stabilize their so-called disciplic succession. Just like they're setting up their own, uh, how can I say, samadhi tombs in Vrindavan. So many things going on like that. Own samadhi tombs, own disciplic successions. For example, in the case I was speaking to Sean Evans, he was involved with the uh, Radhanath camp. Now, what happened was when he was living in the ashram, their ashram, they were getting him to attend the journey home class, the reading of this book by Radhanath to indoctrinate their membership into his position as guru, fake guru. Instead of reading Gita, instead of reading Bhagavatam, instead of reading Chaitanya Charitamrita from the unedited books, they're reading this Mayavadi book by Radhanath. So Ron Singh has put up the whole thing is a scam. It's very interesting. You you showed an under. You showed an under. Yeah, but I would like to know is what is GBC stance on this? Well, you know, it's interesting to note, I wanted to comment just quickly. The GBC members, the gurus, are dropping out now. Two weeks ago, two, five GBC members, Malati, Bhakti Marg Swami, uh, Radhanath Swami, etc. There's five of them. They withdrew from being members of the GBC. Because, Why? The GBC is going to, is being sued in multiple levels. They're being sued. Here we have Malati, Naranjana, Radhanath, Bhakti Bhushana, et cetera. These, These people realize, does it matter if they're a GBC member or can they just carry on with the guru business on their own and avoid any litigation that the GBC are going to be subjected to. They did not give up anything. They're simply avoiding the responsibility of the GBC by withdrawing. Very interesting move. You showed an under. This will be under. Yeah. Push your speaker. <laughs> your microphone. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Your microphone's not working, Ashoda. Ultimately, the whole basis of this entire approach basically is is a concoction. Prabhupada did not appoint any of these people as its successors or as initiating guru. They concocted that in 1978. They manufactured that interpretation because it was convenient to maintain their monopoly on spiritual advancement, that nobody can be part of the Holy Mother Church unless they went through them, just like caste Brahmins in Bengal and South India. They claim that nobody has access to spiritual life or mantras unless it goes through them. Same thing with these people. Same thing with these people. I see there's a lot of very nice comments from many other devotees there. We should get some of them. Anda Bhakya, okay? Does she have a comment? I didn't see. Did you want to make a comment? No, she doesn't. We have other comments, but we've reached the end of the program. Thank you very much, everyone. If you get a chance, just I know it erases at the end of the chat, but at the same time, um, who who gave that one? Oh, Anandibaya. The temple president said, as each molesting victim or other victims come forward, it is another example 
of t- t- GBC mismanagement. Huh. And it is so-called GBC death by a thousand cuts. Then they resign to try to protect themselves legally while keeping their stolen money or even continue on as gurus in their own zone or in their own separated guru spin off empires. Exactly. That's exactly what's going on. This is not renunciation. This is manipulation by these people. No, this is the, yeah, go ahead. I, this is what's going to happen down the road, Prabhuji, is that they are going to undermine the importance of GBC. They're going to uh, completely get rid of GBC. And just like the Gaudiya Math, everything is going to be separated, individual uh, gurus with their own individual disciplines, succession with their own independent temples. And ISKCON as a whole is just going to fall apart. And this is, I think, will be the eventuality of these particular uh, sects. Just like when I was reading your article at your, on your website on Narayan Maharaj, where Narayan Maharaj claims that, oh, I am the bona fide representative. How did he become bona fide? Because his Guru Maharaj was Keshav Maharaj, and Keshav Maharaj was not re- uh, appointed by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj as to be the next Acharya. So how did Keshav Maharaj started initiating disciples? So Narayan Maharaj's uh, initiation itself was illegal. So how can he become that? So just like how in the, in the Gaudiya Mat everything has dissipated, ISKCON is going to be dissipated because nobody's going to follow GBC and eventually everybody is going to go individually to these people. And that is why the, some of them have temples which are not affiliated with ISKCON. They are not uh, signed up with the central uh, board <clears throat> and they are going to continue their nonsense uh, till Krishna comes and stops it. Yes, exactly. And, you know, I just will we'll wind up the program and thank you for everyone for attending. We're three minutes over. But <clears throat> there are some people that are saying they're going to sue people for poisoning Prabhupada. There's the books that are out right now saying they're So I, I asked a pertinent question, like, who are you going to sue? And who is this, the party that's bringing the complaint? No answer. There is no answer. We're going to restore ISKCON to what it was. We're going to go back and take over the society and restore it to what it is. Excuse me. The boat has left the harbor. These groups are all on their own. I made a comment to the individual. What organization are you going to sue? Are you going to sue Rodinoff's organization? He doesn't hold any property in Iskon's name. Are you going to sue Naranjana in the in in Europe and Northern Europe? He doesn't hold anything in Iskon's name. All of these people have private bank accounts, private corporations, and they're running them under their sole absolute authority. Absolute authority, absolute corruption. Remember that. This is 100% corrupt. I could see Yashoda is ready to finalize this. Please, Prabhu, speak. Yashoda, Prabhu. I think it's a very important point because we see as the whole institution breaks down, not just the guru system, but the original basis of the movement has broken down. On this program, we keep making comments and statements about the importance of preserving the legacy of Srila Prabhupada, his books, his original, non-adulterated first edition books. And we see that some people don't understand the importance of that. They just don't get it. Then you cannot amend the words of the pure devotee claiming, of thinking that some people think that this is what he really intended this is what Prabhupada really wanted. This is what Prabhupada was really trying to say. This is simply nonsense. Simply nonsense. And this is the problem. Once the unity of the mission is broken, yeah. then the basis, the books are broken too. Hare Krishna. Okay, so that's enough for this evening. Thank you, everyone. Please, you can look at the chats. 
Thank you for staying on. We had a large group today. And we're getting four, 500, 600 views on our website, on, on our YouTube channel of our classes. It's not a large number, but it's, it's improving gradually. And invite your friends that are sincere about Krishna consciousness to share four and a half hours a week with us. That's all, just four and a half hours a week out of 168 hours a week in this opportunity to associate with like-minded Prabhupada disciples. All glories to the Sankirtan movement. We'll see you on Saturday and Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bhagavad Gita as it is and Srimad Bhagavatam class on Sunday of this week. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Let's move forward with the Kirtan and then the closing slideshow. Haribo. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Vadadha Shri Vashadi Gauratha Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Vadadha Shri Vashadi Gauru Bhakta Bhunda Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna
Let us offer our respectful obeisances to all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord. Vanchakalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Bande Hang Sri Guru Sri Juta Padakamalam Sri Guru Vaishna Vangsha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathanitam Tam Sajivam Sadaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya